greet you on this fourth Sunday of April. Thank God for you choosing to worship with us virtually. We just thank God for him allowing us another chance, another honor and a privilege to be in his presence one more time. Praying that God will continue to hold us in the palm of his hand in this pandemic season. It's not the same as it used to be, but God is still good. Through it all, we've learned how to trust in Him. We've learned how to depend on Him. We've learned how to, uh, to, 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 to put all of our faith in Him. So we're here this morning to give God all the praise, all the glory and honor. You can praise Him right where you are. You can bless the Lord right there on your couch, in your home, on at the, the, the breakfast table. You can praise Him right wherever you are. And so this morning we come and bring you greetings from the St. Mary Missionary Baptist Church of Lindell, Texas. Why well, I, myself, Pastor Marcus Jones, is your pastor. We just thank God for you being with us on this morning. We thank to all of our members that we love you and we miss you. We miss seeing your faces on Sunday morning. We miss seeing you uh, even on Wednesday nights. But we pray that this live video will be an encouragement to you to let you know that all hope is not gone, that God is still on the throne, and that whatever you need, whatever you stand in need of, God is able to meet every one of your needs. We're getting ready to worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness, and we want to pray uh, for our sick, our shut-in, and bereaved. We want to be in prayer for this morning, uh, Sister Janice Robinson's son, Brother Jamin, Javon Robinson, amen, as he has went through surgery. We want to be in prayer for him that God will continue to heal his body. We want to pray for Sister Sheridan, pray for Sister Aristine, we want to pray for Sister uh, Sister Joanne, and we want to continue to pray for all of our people everywhere. That we know that God is still a healer. That God can do what no other power but the Holy Ghost power can do. Let us bow. Father God, we thank you for the, allowing us to wake up early this morning. Thank you for starting us on our way. Thank you for putting food on our table. Giving us a bed to sleep in, a roof over our head, clothes on our back, shoes on our feet. We just thank you for the little things, the air that we breathe, the sight that we see, the hearing that we hear. We thank you for everything that you've done for us. You've made ways out of no ways. You've opened doors that no man can shut. You've closed doors that no man can open. You provided for us when we didn't have a time gave us uh, the, the means to make it. When we didn't have any bread, you gave us bread from on high. We thank you for the strength that's in our bodies, for the activities of our limbs. We just say thank you. We can't tell you thank you enough because if we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't thank you enough. Thank you earlier this morning. Thank you even midday. Thank you even in the midnight hour. We pray that we, you would bless all of our members. You would bless them one by one and bless them all together. Bless everybody that's watching this video all over this land and country. Oh God, you know how to touch, you know how to heal, you know how to set free, and you know how to deliver. Move on their behalf. Bless every household that's watching us this morning. Bless every person that's watching us. Bless every family that's watching us. Keep your hands of protection all around them. Keep the blood over the doorpost. Keep the virus at bay that we may be able to keep on standing in this day and season. Have your way in this place. Move by your spirit. Move by your power. But we don't know no other name that, that we can call on but that men can be saved. But at the name of Jesus, 
Jesus. One day every knee is going to bow and every tongue has got to confess that he is Lord. Oh God, we thank you, we love you, we glorify you, and we praise you. In Jesus' name we ask it done that every heart believer say amen and amen again. God bless you and God keep you as I pray. We thank God on this morning for the wonderful First Lady of the St. Mary Church. She's here with us on this morning. And we thank God, amen, for the wonderful mu music ministry, Brother Paul Starling, amen, and our own Brother uh, Thomas Robinson. We thank God for them, amen, amen. We're getting ready to uh, worship the Lord. We have a beautiful song selection, amen, set for you. Uh, why don't you just worship him, amen, right where you are as we worship him through song. Amen.
Church. We would like to say we are so excited and elated, again, that you have allowed us to be in your homes again this morning on this Sunday morning. We thank you for continuing to support the ministry. We thank you for continuing to support us as we come every Sunday to give you a word from God. We want to say a special thank you to uh, Paul Stoller for coming every Sunday to minister in music. We want to say a thank you to Brother Thomas for continuing to be with us every Sunday. And we want to pray for each and every one of our members out there that are sick and shut in and that are dealing with any sickness on today. But we thank God for just God being God on this week. And right now, we are so excited that we are again able to hear a wonderful word from God on this Sunday. And I want to leave you with this word on today. Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Lord, I'll never forget, no, never. No matter what we're going through through this pandemic, we always have to remember what God has already done to know what God can and will do. So on today, I just want you to be in carriage and to know that we love you and to know that we miss you on this Sunday. And also, thank you to all the members that went out and delivered care packages on last Sunday. That was a wonderful, 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 wonderful gesture of kindness that you showed our members. And we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for Pastor and First Lady Jones. We thank you for doing that. We thank you for showing our members how much that we do care for them. We thank you for just letting our members know that we have not forgot about them. We are so excited. We can't wait to see each and every one of your faces again. And I'm so ready to just praise God with each and every one of you. So on today, don't forget what he has already done for us. So we can know and remember what he will and can do for us. The same God back then is the same God. Amen. We thank God for the first lady on this morning. Thank God for all of you. Amen. By way of announcements, let me just announce this, that uh, we do uh, have uh, three different ways that you can give, continue to give to our ministry. Amen. Uh, we have uh, PayPal. The link will be up on the screen at some point of this video. Also, give the fact. You can download the app and you can hit a button and your, your tithes and offering can go uh, straight to uh, where it needs to go. And also, you can mail it in. Amen. To our P.O. box, which will be on the screen. And also, uh, uh, you can drop it off to one of our staff members' houses. Amen. Thank you all so much for uh, doing what you've done in this season. Uh, matter of fact, uh, last week, we had a little work done to the church. Amen. And we were able to do that because our members are still giving. Thank you so much. Amen. For uh, being obedient to God's word. Amen. In this season. Also, our next Sunday is our first Sunday, and we're actually going to do virtual uh, communion service on next Sunday. I'm asking that all of our members would uh, contact Sister Cardella Dorsey to pick up, amen, the elements, your bread and your wine, amen, that we may be able to take it on Sunday morning. As you watch the video, we'll be able to take it together on next Sunday. Please contact her on Friday and Saturday to pick up your elements. Amen. Just let her know how many you need. She'll prepare those for you. Amen. That we may be able at the end of the video to take it all together. I'm asking that you would please, ma'am, please, sirs, amen, be obedient that we may be able to observe the Lord's Supper first Sunday of May. Amen. All right, we're getting ready to, amen, go into the word of God. There is a word, amen, amen, that, amen, we want to continue, amen, as the Lord has given us, amen, this new series, Tuning Up Your Prayer Life, amen, and I was so blessed on last week, I'm just looking forward to what God has in store for us on this week, amen, amen, Tuning Up Your Prayer Life. Amen. On this morning, uh, we're going to be looking at Matthew 6, uh, 
starting at verse number five. Matthew six, starting at verse number five.
Ain't he been good? I got somebody just type that on the screen. He's been real good. He's been mm, good. He's been so, so good. He's been good to me. Matthew chapter 6, starting at verse 5. The word says, And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogue and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, that they have their reward. But thou, but thou when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father, which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. And when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathens do. As the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard of their much speaking, but not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things you have need of before you even ask. And after this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. And we're going to wrap it up with verse number 10 on this week. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Amen. We're just going to simply talk about, amen. Lord, teach us to pray. Amen. Tuning up your prayer life, part number two. Amen. Tuning up your prayer life. And uh, this is part number two. My brothers and sisters, one day the disciple came to Jesus and asked him, Lord, teach us to pray. And that disciple knew that his prayer life was lacking. He knew that his prayer life needed just a little help. And let me ask you the question this morning, how is your prayer life going, going through this pandemic season? How is your prayer life when everything has been shut down? I, 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 how do you suppose this disciple really knew that his prayer life needed some help? And I, I pondered over this question. Was it because his, the other disciples had a continuous and consistent prayer life? Perhaps, maybe. Or maybe, amen, he believed that his prayer life was lacking simply because of the practice and power of prayer life that Jesus exemplary and, and he, he, he showed them. And, and I believe, I believe, I believe this morning that we can learn something from this disciple as he watches Jesus pray. Because in the Bible, in Mark chapter 1 verse 35, the Bible said, now in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary place, and there he prayed. That's talking about Jesus. And here it is that when we begin to understand that Jesus made it a priority, amen, to pray. John uh, chapter 5 verse 19 tells us Jesus' answer to the question, why do you want to pray? And Jesus said, because, uh, amen, in his own testimony, the son cannot do anything of himself. And I came to encourage somebody to let you know that we got to learn that we can't do this thing by ourselves. We can't make it by ourselves. We cannot live by ourselves. As a matter of fact, it's been said that when we depend on organizations, we get what organizations really can do. 
when we depend on education, we get what education really can do. When we depend on man, we get what man can do. But here it is now that when we depend on prayer, we can really depend on what God can do. I, I dare somebody to just say, I'm depending on prayer on the comments. I'm depending on prayer. I'm depending on prayer. No wonder God tells us in Psalm 50 verse 15, he says, call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. In other words, here it is now that God says, when trouble comes, call upon me. I will deliver you and by delivering you uh, you are a man being delivered and I will get the glory after this I, I came to encourage somebody and let you know that God is going to get the glory not after this uh, but even in this he's going to get the glory while we're shut in our homes he's going to get the glory while some of your jobs have been cut off he's going to get the glory while your amen your family is spreading apart he's going to get the glory after after this. Matter of fact, it was Martin Luther who said it like this. He said, it's a good thing to let prayer be the first business of the morning and then uh, let it be the last business of the evening. Uh, so we need to learn how to hem in both sides of the day with prayer. Watch this. So it won't be so likely to unravel in the middle. I think that that's a good word for somebody to let you know that sometimes amen as we're going throughout the day there's going to be some pitfalls. There's going to be some hurts. There's going to be some people that are going to come in your path that are going to try to discourage you. That are going to try to hurt you, but if you got a prayer life, it don't matter what the devil throws at me, as long as I can pray to God, God is going to hear and answer my prayer. Are y'all following me? Matter of fact, God says in Jeremiah 33 and 3, he says, call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you know not. And can I carry y'all to let you know that the problem is not simply an unanswered prayer, but the problem is an unoffered prayer. I dare somebody to say that in the comments. It's not an un amen answered prayer, but it's an unoffered prayer. Uh, matter of fact, when you begin to look at it, uh, uh, we need to be more like the disciples that came to Jesus one day asking, Lord, teach us to pray. We need to be asking that because in Jeremiah, God says, call to me. And then in Psalms, God says, call upon me. And over and over again, God is simply telling us like he told us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, don't stop praying. Don't cease praying. Don't stop praying even when it gets hard. Even when your back is against the wall. Even when your amen friends are few. When your money is low. Don't stop praying. Somebody type that on the screen. Don't stop praying. Encourage somebody in your house. Tell them don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. Why shouldn't we stop praying? Because uh, prayer is our weapon. I told you that on last week. Prayer is, a, amen, to the devil, a barrier. Prayer, amen, to God is a fragrance. Uh, and guess what? You can carry this fragrance uh, for 24 hours in a day. I'm glad about that uh, because you can pray anytime you need it. You, you can pray driving down the road in your car. You can pray sitting at your desk at work. You can pray, amen, wherever you are because prayer is something between you and God. And so here it is now in Matthew chapter the chapter number six, uh, the Bible begins to give us a prayer uh, guide, uh, a model, if you will, to follow uh, as we learn more about this thing called prayer. Uh, so here we, amen, uh, simply ask the Lord ourselves this morning, uh, Lord, teach us to pray. 
we we find amen amen in the beginning uh in matthew 6 uh, starting at verse number five uh, that there were some issues uh, amen uh, that jesus wanted to warn us about uh, he said in verse number five don't pray like the hypocrites for they love to pray standing in the synagogues they love to pray standing on the corners of the street that they may be seen of me. Assuredly, I say unto you, they have their reward. Can I tell you this morning uh, that we can't get the idea, amen, that Jesus is, con is not condoning public prayer, but Jesus is condemning pious prayer. He's condemning, amen, pretentious prayer. He's condemning, amen, prayers that are not sincere and real in heart towards him. Matter of fact, uh, he said, don't be like the hypocrites. I was reading an article the other day about a lawyer who just started his new practice. He was sitting in his new office, sitting at his new desk, and he was ready to get his business jumping. He heard somebody coming through the door and he saw a shadow of them coming through the door and he wanted that potentially new customer to make it seem like he was a very busy man. He picked up the phone and started having a man a fake phone call. He, he as the man entered into the door, he answered the phone and said, yes, yes, I have my secretary. Amen. Get on that. Amen. Uh, early in the morning. I got a lot of business to take care of. My schedule is pretty busy. We'll get back with you tomorrow. And he hung up the phone and turned to the potential man, a man that was standing in front of him and said, now what can I do for you? And the man simply looked at him and said, sir, I'm from the telephone company and I came to hook up your line. In other words, we got a lot of people that are praying just like that. We're praying to God, but we ain't got nobody else on the line. I need to encourage somebody to let you know that if you pray and pray right, I mean, you got to be sincere in your prayer. You got to be for real with your prayer, and God would not fail to answer you. Matter of fact, you got to learn in this season that we can't have, amen, prayers going up to God and God not coming down to us. Y'all ain't saying that then, uh, because some of us, amen, are praying and we're asking God, teach us to pray. But God is looking at how we're living. God is looking at how we're acting towards him. What God is looking at how we're believing in the season. And see, you got to understand that it's important to have a prayer life. Can I ask y'all a question this morning? Would you like to be a prayer warrior? I mean, a prayer warrior is something, amen, that 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 that, that, that we need. I mean, do, would you like to be able to pray to where mountains will be moved? Would you like to be able to pray, pray where people will be healed, where diseases will cease and cancer has to go? Would you like to pray where people will be delivered and recovered through prayer? Because you know that through prayer, God can change any situation. He can change any condition. E.M. Bound said it like this. He said, what the church needs today is not more machinery. It does not need new organizations. It does not need new methods. But it needs men and women whom the Holy Spirit can use through prayer. It needs men and women that are mighty in prayer. It needs uh, the Holy Spirit to flow. It don't flow through methods. It don't flow through machinery. It don't flow through meetings, uh, but it flows through prayer. God don't anoint your plans, but he anoints you to pray for your plans. <laughs> 
That's a good word for somebody out there. And Jesus now begins to give us a model, amen, a guide, if you will, to follow in prayer. Matter of fact, last week I told y'all in this model about the person of prayer. That was the first thing that we saw, the person of prayer. When we began to look at verse number five, it says, our father. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Amen. In verse number nine, in verse number nine, the focus here of prayer is the person of prayer. Amen. Now, 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 learn this about prayer. We pray to the Father through the Son and in the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to say that again. But somebody sitting in the back. We pray to the Father through the Son in the power of the Holy Ghost. Matter of fact, when you begin to look at prayer, we, amen, use the entire, amen, Godhead, amen, the Holy Trinity that makes the prayer possible and powerful. That's a good word for somebody right there. The hope to, to, to the Father, through the Son, and to the power of the Holy Ghost. So in this model prayer, Jesus begins by giving us the person of prayer. But not only the person of prayer, now he begins to give us the purpose of prayer. That's what we're going to look at this week, the purpose of prayer. Because in his teaching, in verse number 10, uh, he says, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Do y'all not understand that prayer has a purpose? And there's so many people out there that believe that the purpose of prayer is for us to get what we can get from God. Priest Jones, I'm doing the best I can. I see so many folks think that if I can get what I need from God, then my prayers have been answered. No, simply you got to understand that the purpose of prayer is that God's kingdom would come. Now, when you pray God's kingdom to come, you got to be able to understand that to begin with, it means that our prayer should include the surrender of our lives. Mm, let's look at that for a moment. When we surrender our lives, the word kingdom, do y'all see it? The word kingdom in verse number 10, it simply means to rule. It simply means to reign. It simply means to have dominion. It speaks of authority. Of uh, It speaks of sovereignty. Look at it if you will. We talk about sovereignty of God all the time. What does it mean when we say God is sovereign? It simply means that God is king. That God rules. That God reigns. And when you pray, your kingdom come, we're simply praying your rule is coming. Your reign is coming. Your authority is coming. Your sovereignty is coming. Do you see it? Jesus is teaching us to pray in doing so. To pray that God's reign and ruler of our lives will come. And for God to rule and reign over our lives, we first got to surrender. Somebody take that over the screen. Surrender. Surrender is more than a commitment. God longs for more than a commitment. Amen. He longs for our surrender. Let me ask you something. Do you know what it means to surrender to God? Do you understand, amen, what it really means? I remember watching Gunsmoke. Some of y'all remember watching that show with your parents, your grandparents. Amen. Now we're old enough, we're watching it on our own now. And at the beginning of the show, there would be a crime at a scene, amen, of some people that were committing a crime. And when the word got back to Matt Dillon, he would always come to where the, the crime of the scene was, and he would holler out, come out with your hands up. And when they would come out, 
They would have their hands raised and it was an expression of surrender. Their hands raised in the air would say that they were amen soldiers, but they surrendered all. In other words, take my gun, take my knife, take everything that I have uh, because I surrender all. I came to encourage somebody this morning that we got to learn how to surrender all to God. We can amen do this thing by Ourselves, but surrender your life to him that he may lead and direct you in the path that he would have you to go. Some years ago, there was a young man that wanted to live for God. And as this young man wanted to live for God, he had took out some index cards. And now he wrote on those index cards some letters. Let me show you what he wrote. On the index card, on each card, he wrote a different letter. L on one letter. E on one card. T on another card. G on another card. O on another card. And D on another card. And when he spread them out, it said, let go. And so he wanted to live for God so so good and so badly that he put this on his dresser every day when he waked up in the morning. Uh, waked up in the morning, he saw let God. When he came into his room all down during the day, he saw let God. But one day, a breeze went through the room and knocked over the last card. He walked in the room and he picked up the letter D and he looked back at the dresser and now it said something totally different. It said, let go. In other words, my brothers and sisters, in order for us to get this life right, in order for us to have a, a real prayer life with God, we got to let some stuff go. We got to let go of our pride. We got to let go of our amen, uh, 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 hatred towards other men. We got to let go of the malice that we have for our brothers and sisters. We got to let go of some things that we're holding on to. I dare somebody to just encourage somebody to tell them, let go. Let go. I'm getting ready to close this thing, but I wanted to show you in verse number 10, amen, Jesus said to us, your kingdom come, your will be done. He was teaching us to pray in such a way as we would relinquish the rule of our lives over to him. <laughs> we gotta let go. We gotta let go. Some of us want all that we can get because we have not let go of the world and we're still trying to do what we gotta do for him. You gotta let go and when you let go of the world, God will give you what you need. It's saying, Lord, I surrender. Everything I have is yours. Everything I hope to be is yours. Matter of fact, you rule and you reign. Matter of fact, I surrender all to him. And the songwriter said, uh, I surrender all. Uh, amen to him. I surrender my life. I surrender my service. I surrender my, my treasure and I surrender my talent and my time. And the Lord says, when you surrender, that give me ample time to take over and lead you and guide you in where you need to be. And the truth of the matter is, uh, too many Christians are running frustrated. Uh, too many Christians are running around and fed up uh, with this world. Too many Christians uh, are running around ready to fight somebody. Amen. And your stomach is tied up in knots. Uh, your amen blood pressure is at an all time high. You're complaining and busting and now you're hard to live with. Uh, now nobody wants to be around you. Uh, but I came to tell you that we're struggling rather than surrendering. Uh, I think I'm going to say that again. We're struggling uh, rather than surrendering. Uh, because when you surrender, uh, you won't struggle with your pride no more. 
for the state leadership. I pray for this nation's leadership. That they will continue to lead us in the way that they would have us to go. Satan, you are a liar and we put you under our feet. Oh God, we, we're not going to bow down to the, the, the words of Satan, but we're going to trust in you. You are the author and the finisher of our faith. By faith, we believe that we can have what we decree. We speak healing right now. We speak deliverance right now. We speak, God, that you would, oh God, open some doors for somebody right now. Somebody needs a job. Somebody needs financial assistance. Somebody needs transportation. In the name of Jesus, have your way right now, God. Move like you know how to move. Ride like you know how to ride. Oh God, meet every one of our needs. Supply every one of our needs. Oh God, when we're down, lift us up. When we're out, bring us back in. When we're low, you know how to lift up our hands. You're a burden battle. You're a heavy load shower. You're a heart thinker and a mind regulator. Oh God, bless all of our members everywhere. Bless Brother Jamal Robinson right now. Bless Sister Sherry Cooper right now. Bless Sister Joanne right now. Bless Sister uh, Robinson right now. Bless Sister Irisine right now. Remember Sister Pat this morning. Oh God, we pray that you will bless every member. Oh God, bless us all one by one. And bless us all together. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, we love you. And we glorify you. It's our prayer. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. We pray that this message was a blessing to you. If you would please like and share this video, that we may be able to reach, amen, people all over, amen, to spread the good news. It's not about my name, it's not about this church, but it's about spreading the gospel, amen, to people everywhere that they may hear, amen, a word from the Lord, amen. Remember, amen, we do have those ways to give. Amen. You can drop it off at one of the staff members' house. Amen. You can mail it to our P.O. box. And you can also, amen, uh, pay it online, PayPal, and Givelify. Amen. And we pray that uh, the Lord will truly bless you this week as we continue to go throughout this pandemic. Amen. That he will bless your household. He will bless your children. He will bless everyone everywhere. Amen. Just remember that, amen, let's not get weary in well-doing, but in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Y'all have a wonderful rest of the day. May God bless you and may God keep you is our prayer. Amen.